What's going on guys? John Holder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build this cool font picker for our apps with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to check out this font picker. So we've got a text box here with some text in it and we can come through here and pick different fonts. And you can see I can scroll through here with my mouse and get all different things. And uh, very cool and actually very easy to do. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and then Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code for this video in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kinter videos in the series, almost 200. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I've got a file I'm calling it font underscore dialogue, sort of like a dialogue box. You can pick fonts, right? So let's come through here and let's start out by creating a frame. And I'm going to call this my frame. And this is just going to be a frame. We want to put it in root. And I'm going to give this a width of 480 by a height of 275. And you can see my app is 500 by 500. So this is, you know, slightly smaller than that. Now let's just my underscore frame dot pack and pack this on the screen. Let's give it a pad Y of 10 just to push it down a little bit. So we've got a frame and inside of a frame, I want to put a text box. And the reason why I'm putting it in a frame is because text boxes are a little wonky how you can size them. You can size them based on the width of the fonts, but we're going to be changing the fonts. So as we change the fonts, the text box will change sizes. So to keep that from happening, I'm going to put it in a frame and then we're going to do a little bit of voodoo to make sure it freezes at the size we want. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But for now, let's go ahead and create our text box. I'm just going to call it my text. And this is going to be a text box. And we want to put it in my frame. And we want to give this a font of something. Now, normally we would go like, you know, Helvetica and then like 32, something like that, make it really big. But instead of doing that, I want to make this dynamic. So I'm just going to create a variable called our font. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But for now, let's just sort of uh, get this onto the screen. So I'm going to go my underscore text dot grid and we want to put this in row zero and column zero. And the reason why I'm using grid inside of this frame and we used pack outside of the frame, right? Is because, like I said, text boxes will resize oddly, and we're gonna use the grid system to help us do that. So, to do that, let's just knock this out right now. Let's go my underscore text dot grid underscore row configure. And I've got videos on this in the playlist. If you're not sure what grid row configure is, you can go ahead and watch those. Just check the playlist. And we wanna give this a zero and a weight of one. And I wanna do the same thing for column configure. So here, let's say uh, add text box. And here, let's say add frame. Now we need to do one more thing with the frame themselves. So if you're familiar with frames, they usually will shrink and grow based on what's inside of them. And we don't want that to happen. We want to sort of freeze it in place. And we can do that. Let's say freeze frame in place by going my underscore frame dot grid underscore propagate and setting that equal to false. And then we also want to my underscore frame dot column configure. We wanna set that equal to zero and let's give this a weight of 10. So that should freeze everything in place and that's good. Now up here, let's designate our font. So you'll notice in our text box, we set the font to our font. So now we have to define what that is. And to do that, we're going to use the Kinter font system. So I've talked about this a little bit in other videos. We just want to go from tkinter import font. Now this will give us access to all the font families on your computer and allow us to do all kinds of fonty type things, right? So we can set our font right here to font dot font. And this, you know, this guy here is this thing we just imported, right? And inside of here, we can set the family to anything we want. And right now, let's just put it at Helvetica. That's our old trusty standby. And we can set the size at anything we want to. I'll put that at 32. So, okay, that should work. Let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that looks okay. But before we do that, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships to all my courses, videos, and books. Run time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, end of commercial. Let's run this guy. So Python font underscore dialogue dot pi. Uh oh, typo, typo. So obviously this is supposed to say column configure. There we go. All right, let's try this guy again. 
Okay, so we get a nice text box up here, has nice big Helvetica text. Okay, good to go. So now we need a list box down here that has all the fonts on our computer. So how do we make that? Where do we get all the fonts on our computer and how can we add them very easily? Well, like I said, it is actually very easy. All we have to do is come down here and let's add list box. And I have lots of videos on list boxes in the playlist if you don't know what this is. So go ahead and check those out. So let's go my list box. And that's just going to be a list box. We want to put it in root. We want the select mode to equal single. We just want to be able to click one thing at a time, right? We don't want to be able to click multiple things in the box. We're choosing one font at a time, right? And I'm going to give this a width of like 80 to kind of stretch it out to the size of our app here. And let's go my underscore list box dot pack. And that should be fine. Okay, so now let's add font families to list box. So how do we do that? Well, remember we imported font and that kind of contains all the fonts on our computer. So we can just loop through that and add each font to our list box. Remember to add something to our list box, we just go my list box dot insert. And then, you know, we want to put it at the end of our list box and then, you know, some text. All right? So if we save this and run it, it should just say some text. It does we have one thing in there. So it's really easy to add things. We just have to loop through and add each of those things. So we can do that. So let's go for, I don't know, let's call it F short for font in font dot families. And this is a function. And that's it. This font dot families will list all of the fonts on your computer. So now we can just loop through here. And we can just copy this guy, tab it in. And instead of saying some text here, we could just say F. Right, so that's this F guy right here. So that should do the trick. Let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. And boom, we've got a list of all of our fonts. Now I'm using my mouse scroll wheel to scroll down here. You could put a scroll bar on the side of this. You could also put a scroll bar up here on our text box. I have videos on how to do both of those things. If you're interested, watch those videos. I'm not even gonna go through and do that in this video because it's just gonna be confusing. And we don't really care about that right now. We just wanna get to you know, making this work. So now if I type something in here and click on one of these things, nothing happens. Now, what we want to happen is when I click on courier, we want this font to change to courier, right? So how do we do that? Well, we just have to bind the list box. And I think I have videos on that as well. But I'll go ahead and walk through it here. Because you know, it's a <laughs> pretty important part of this. Let's go bind the list box. So let's go my underscore list box dot bind. And then the binding that we want is button release. So when we click on a thing and release the button, that will fire this event that will then do something. So to do that, we want, like I said, button release dash one, right? And what do we want to happen? Well, let's run a function whenever we release the button. And I'm going to call that function chooser, right? We're choosing the font, or you could say font chooser, whatever, right? So let's go ahead and copy this. Now we just have to create that function. So let's come up here to the top and create font chooser function, right? So let's define font chooser. And this is going to be a binding. And anytime there's a binding, you're passing an event into the function. And so we have to account for that. And I'll just call it E. So now what do we want to happen? Well, we want to update this, our font, right? And since our font is this font family, we can dot configure it, right? It's not like a regular variable anymore. We've assigned it to whatever this is. Font dot font here is, you know, a function that we can configure. So let's go r underscore font dot config. And then I'll put this on another line, we want to change the family to whatever is we've clicked on in my list box. So that's my underscore list box dot get and we what do we want to get Well, we want to get my underscore list box dot current selection. And that's a function. Okay, so yeah, that's a lot of parentheses, but I think that's right. Yeah, we can do it like this to make it a little easier to see. So this goes with this, this one goes with this. So yeah, that looks right. So let's put this back. Okay, so that's all we have to do. So this will grab our current selection, which is whatever that font is, assign it to family, which is what this is right here, right? Family. And that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and save this and run it and see if that worked. I suspect it. Uh oh, button really I misspelled release, man, all of the typos today. And yeah, it's a long weekend. All right, re 
release. There we go. Button release. Okay. Now, clear the screen. Let's run this guy one more time. So I can type something. Hello, world. T. Kenter is awesome. All right? And we can come through here and click on something. Hey, look at that. Hey, who? All kinds of weird things. Hey. <laughs> I don't know what that is. So script, nice little cursive. That one was weird. And just that easy. So I'm using a text box here. Obviously, you don't have to use a text box, any sort of label or entry box or text of any kind that you want to update the font family for. You can use this method. You know, I probably wouldn't have this thing sitting in my app. I'd have a little thing up here in a menu that said change the font. And then I'd open up another window with this thing that you could pick you know, and then pass it back. We've done stuff like that lots of times in other videos. You know, I'd make it look cooler than this, but this is the basic functionality you want. And it really all just comes down to this guy right here, this little for loop here. We're just looping through all of our font.families. And we can do that because we've imported font up here, right? And then set this equal to it right there by calling this dot font function, right? Just looping through here and inserting each of these things each of these F's into our list box. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.